Hi, and welcome to part one of Lifecycle 301 Advanced Scripting Introduction. So I've been wanting to do these videos for quite a while to get into some of the more advanced topics in Lifecycle and the scripting that you may want to use to make more robust forms, more app-like forms. And so today I want to cover four topics, uh, recommended books that I use when, when doing a lot of scripting, recommended sites that I go to for information, and some of the differences in uh, the different types of scripting languages we can use in Lifecycle, and then how to debug. So let's start off with uh, recommended books. I'm going to pull up a web page here, Amazon, and just show you a few books that I've used over the years that have been very helpful to me. Uh, there's a lot of reference books out there on JavaScript, and most of them are a lot of fluff, and they give you a lot of information that's freely available on the web. This book here really explains more of how to program and less of what to program, or less of the, um, the glossary and the definition type stuff. And this book goes into more of the application. And so it's not live cycle specific, it's, it's mainly geared toward web page scripting, but it is what I found to be the best reference book on how to use the document object model, which is what in Lifecycle is the thing we're programming. If we pulled up a page and went to XML source, you know, we're programming JavaScript inside of this XML document that exists as a PDF. It really is an XML document, but it exists as a PDF. And we're navigating through the hierarchy here uh, as, as, as a top most element and then master page elements and design page elements. And we're navigating through that and that's called the document object model or DOM. And so I do recommend this book, Object Oriented JavaScript, written by Stefanov. And I think this newest edition, I don't have this newest edition, I have, actually have an older version, but I, I imagine there's, there's updates that would be worth uh, looking into. This is the third edition here, and I believe I have the second edition. But I recommend that highly and uh, have been recommending it for a number of years. The second book I recommend is uh, the J.P. Terry book, Adobe Lifecycle Designer, Creating Dynamic PDFs and HTML5 Forms for Desktop and Mobile Applications. And that's the second edition of that. Uh, he gives you a very in-depth view in Lifecycle itself. And it really is inner changeable with AEM. I know that in, in all these newer videos that I'm making, I'm using AEM 6.3, but it would apply to Lifecycle ES4, uh, no problem. So those two books, um, for years, both of those I've recommended. I've, I've probably had those books for seven or eight years and been using them, the older editions. And then what about recommended websites? Well, of course, the number one website is, is Adobe's scripting reference. And uh, that's highlighted up here at the top. Adobe's help website and the scripting reference section for AEM. There's a scripting reference for all the old versions of Lifecycle that you can go to. But of course, this is the most up-to-date reference. And it's got, um, most, most importantly, a form calc reference. Uh, form calc is an Adobe proprietary language. It's only used inside of Adobe products. And so you're not going to find much reference outside of this one on the web. So that's very important to know that link right there. And it also gives examples. And it explains a lot of the way in which JavaScript can manipulate forms. So I highly recommend that. But just for a JavaScript tutorial or a JavaScript reference, I like to go to W3 schools. They're, they're the best. They've got everything laid out in a very simple and easy to use format and you can test things here. Of course, again, this is geared toward HTML programming or web JavaScript programming, but the principles are all the same and the syntax is basically all the same. And it even does advanced things like talk about JSON, which is something I will be doing in some of these advanced videos. Um, so a lot of advanced topics, uh, a, lot of, a lot of stuff you're going to see me doing with switch statements and um, arrays. I pulled right from this site. Okay, so those are, those are some helps for you. Use those helps. You're never going to be able to program 
in AEM without some help. Nobody just sits down and starts firing off code. Of course, a lot of people out there uh, find code in Google, other sites, other people's code and reuse it. I've got no problem doing that. Do it, find it, uh, tweak it, and make it work for you. Um, so the next topic I want to talk about is JavaScript versus form calc. So if we open up our script editor, and we put it here on the window, the script editor is where we type out the script. If I just put a, a simple text field on my page and I want to script some type of event with that text field, I need to open up the script editor here. And then I need to pick an event. And I've gone over this in other videos, but we're just going to pick the, the exit event here. We want a script that fires or runs when we exit the text field. And so I have this event chooser drop-down box. But I also have this language drop-down box. And I can swap between JavaScript and form calc. And you'll notice right here, when I switch, that statement switches. For the majority of my advanced 301 class, I'm going to be dealing in JavaScript. But every once in a while, it makes more sense to do form calc. Form calc's a little more simple if you're going to be doing basic arithmetic or you're going to be adding up rows of tables or something like that. Form calc's what I use. But anything else beyond that, I'm usually using JavaScript. The run at, I've never seen any of this matter in any of my scripts because I'm, of course, using Lifecycle Designer. I'm not using Lifecycle Server, and so this really ne never comes into play. For everything I do, I just leave it a client, and it never affects anything my scripts are doing. All right, then the last topic here in this first video I want to talk about is debugging. How do you debug? Well, it's, it's difficult to debug in Lifecycle or in AEM, and that's because the debugger doesn't exist inside of this software. It exists inside of Adobe proper. So if I open up this form in Adobe, I can debug by going ahead and using the form. But in order for the debugger to actually be functional, I've got to do one thing first. Inside of Adobe, I've got to turn on the debugger. So if you go to Edit, Preferences, and of course, this is Adobe Acrobat 2017, the version I'm using. You, you might have an older version, but it's a similar thing. You need to go to the JavaScript tab, and you need to enable JavaScript debugger after Acrobat is restarted. And that should tell you something. You have to restart Acrobat in order for this to take. Um, of course, enable Adobe JavaScript should be checked already. And the JavaScript security uh, you can you can fool around the thing and make it make it do what you want it to do. Um, I like to have an exception trace when when a in other words what this is saying is when when JavaScript breaks when your code is wrong or when it finds an error what do you want to happen do you want it to ignore the error do you want to break or do you want to trace I, I select trace and I enable Interactive Console and I show Console on errors and messages and in order uh, for the best results in the debugging, I want those three things checked. All right, so let's just introduce an error into our, a bug or, or something into our form here. I'm going to say text field two dot uh, raw value equals nothing in quotes. And so the bug I've introduced is I don't have an object called text field 2. I have an object called text field 11, but text field 2 doesn't exist. And so when the code runs, it's going to see this as an object it doesn't know what to do with. And so it's going to throw an error. So I have my form open. And remember, we put the script in the exit event of text field 11. And so I'm just going to type something, and then I'm going to exit it. And when I do, here is the JavaScript de debugger window. It's throwing an error. And there's a little bit of information here that you need to use. A lot of times, the errors you get, uh, the error codes you get, are not very helpful because, uh, of course, it's an it's a, it's a automatic debugger. It's only doing basic debugging functions. Something went wrong, and you're going to get messages like this. Text field 2 is not defined. And you have to learn, as you debug more and more, 
what some of these things are referring to. And basically, I've learned over the years, okay, when it says something like that, not defined, it means this. there's something wrong with this name. This name doesn't exist, or Java three, JavaScript doesn't think it exists. And like one of the number one errors that you'll see is this one, because maybe you didn't capitalize the F in your script, or the T, or you misnumbered it, or some such thing. Anyway, um, you're going to have to get used to seeing some of these different messages come up. But when you do, you'll start learning what that means. You'll, you'll be able to debug quicker. But one of the biggest important things to see here is this number, 2 colon. And that's basically giving you a line number where the error exists. And so if we had a big, long code, a big, long script uh, that just went on for line after line after line, um, it would be very difficult to find where this error is without some kind of line number. And so what it's saying is in line two is where the error happened. Now, of course, our script is only line two. Line one's blank, line three's blank, so that's all it could have happened. But if you had a, a really big, long script, that would be very helpful. I'll have to go ahead and let the error happen again. All right, and so what happened here is it duplicated the error. It remembered previously what the error was, and then it threw this second error. And the second error is exactly the same as the first error. It's just we didn't erase the first error, and so it started right at the end of that word exit and spit out the exact same error again. And so just a little um, trick here, I guess you could say, is this little trash can icon is a way to remove everything from the console. And so when the error is thrown, you're not seeing things duplicated. And this uh, is, is important if you have a lot of different bugs in your program and you want to just focus on one and then know that it's removed. You need to trash can those messages every time so that it will come back just the errors you're getting now. If you've fixed other errors, you don't want to see them again. Okay, I'm going to wrap up the introduction with that and say that we're, we're well on our way in, in 301. Again, this didn't seem very advanced, but we're going to get into some advanced topics. And just, just to give you, a, to whet your appetite for what we're going to get into, we're going to, we're going to talk about advanced if statement usage, switch statements, the instance manager, looping, arrays, and there's a special function called resolve node. All those kind of things we're going to get to in this Lifecycle 301. So please stay tuned and look for those videos to come out pretty soon. And we're going to get into some, some stuff that you can really sink your teeth into and use for advanced application design inside of a PDF. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.